Okay, everybody, this is Emar Subshoot, and welcome to another edition of Fighting Peaches. As we continue to roll through our previews of Sunbelt Conference teams as the football season kicks off in a matter of hours, by the time you're listening to this episode, we're going to focus on Louisiana, a team that has won the Western Division several times of the Sunbelt Conference and looks to make another long and big run this season. Before we get to the Rage Occasions, as always, follow everything that we do. Head to the mothership to sportsinquire.net, premier site for news and notes in the world of sports. If you head to our site, you'll see our other previews of various Sunbelt teams as far as football season goes, including Appalachian State, Coastal Carolina, uh, Georgia State, Georgia Southern, and a few others. So make sure you go to the site to check that out. You can also go to our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook under Sports Inquirer. That's all one word. And finally, you can go to our audio and video content providers, such as YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, Google Podcast and iTunes under the Sports Inquirer. Do a search on there and you'll be able to see everything that we have going on. All right, let's move to the Raging Cajuns and preview their upcoming season. Uh, last year, they went 10 and 1, including a win over nationally ranked Iowa State to open the season. Lone loss of their campaign came to Coastal Carolina, and that was the the game that cost them a, a chance for a conference championship. And they finished the year, though, with a solid win over UT San Antonio at the first Responders Bowl. So the Raging Cajuns are a team that perennially competes for a, a top spot in the Sun Belt Conference. Last year, 10 and 1, won the West, and look to continue that positive momentum. Here is head coach Billy Napier. Uh, actually having a normal offseason as opposed to their lead up to the 2020 campaign. Well, you know, I think um, if you just really evaluated our team last year and the quality of football that we played, I don't think it was our best effort. Um, and I think that was a product of the work that we missed out on. You know, I mean, we didn't have our traditional spring semester, our traditional summer program. Uh, and I think the way we played was reflected in that. But one thing I've seen and observed and just having conversations with our players uh, is that I think it gives them even more conviction about, you know, needing that preparation, you know, and, and really believing and have conviction in how we do things, what we do, how we do it. Um, I think the pandemic presented a number of issues. Um, I think it was the ultimate leadership challenge last year. And, um, you know, our success, I think, is a, reflection of the great working relationship that we've got with our administration. Uh, we not only tackled the pandemic last year, but I think the social issues across our country, um, I think the passing of Coach D.J. Looney in the preseason, uh, two hurricanes early in the season, uh, and some, you know, the lineup changed about every week the first half of the season. So, um, I'm appreciative of great leadership above me, certainly helped us manage those things. Uh, we're excited up until this point. This has been a traditional offseason. Uh, I know we're not out of the woods yet. You know, I think we're heading the right direction here, but this Delta variant is presenting a whole uh, new set of issues. Uh, but the good thing is we've managed some of those things before. I think we've got a good blueprint in terms of how to go about things. So, in general, 2020 was... Um, a challenge. I think sometimes those produce the most growth and uh, hopefully will benefit from that in the future. A good part or a good thing for the Raging Cajuns is that they do return several top players on the offensive end, including quarterback Levi Lewis. He'll have a really good group of receivers to throw to, including Karen Lacey and Jalen Williams, who are all conference candidates. Here is head coach Billy Napier on that receiver group yeah i think it's going to be one of the more highly competitive position groups you know we've got depth in that room um you you think about last year jalen peter jamal a little bit of the injury bug uh, forced those freshmen into the lineup weren't quite ready for the show truth be known uh, but i think we played through that coach leger did a terrific job uh, develop in that room. I think if you watch the tape, you would see, say that that uh, position group probably improved as much as anybody on our team. 
uh, we're going to benefit from that because now we've got some vets. You know, we've got a really talented room. Uh, we did add a couple players in the portal. Uh, we're excited about the competition. You know, I think that room, I think, is going to be week to week, you know, based off of how they're performing in practice, the urgency, the intensity, the detail. Um, you can see different lineups there. Uh, but Levi's going to benefit from the work you know, all spring and all summer with that group as well. And they also have a solid offensive line coming back, including preseason all-conference lineman Osiris Torrance. And here we are speaking with senior offensive lineman Max Mitchell on the offense and what that unit looks to do this season. Room for improvement. Uh, you know, offensive line is, is, a, is a skill. It's an art. You got you to gotta continuously work it. Um, you know, I think with our returning starters and, and the experience we have, um, I, I think the sky's the limit. We got a we got a great room full of chemistry. Um, I think we're we're all excited to to get to play together another year. You know we're, we're grateful for that. Um, I think you know coaching these young guys makes us better too. He makes us focus on our craft a little bit more, and uh, you know we're we're excited to get to do it again together. Defensively, the Cajuns return. Raging Cajuns. Gotta make sure I say that right. If I say Shanta clears right with the Coastal Carolina preview. I got to do it right for Louisiana. So the Raging Cajuns are uh, led by, on the defensive end, led by defensive back uh, Braylon uh, Thalen, or Trahan. He is a solid player that comes back for the team. Also returned the all-conference punter in Rise Burns. That is a, a good attribute for the, the C Raging Cajuns to have. But a highlighted player on the defensive end that we like to do is a Zion Hill. He led all the linemen for defensive linemen for Louisiana with 49 tackles last season, had five tackles for loss, four sacks, and two fumble recoveries in addition to two quarterback hurries. So he is a player up front that is going to provide a lot of strength for Louisiana. Here he is speaking with us on Media Day for the Sun Belt Conference on the defensive unit. We get to go to we get to go to war again together, you know, and we could rely on each other. So I feel like we built that bond last year. We built that bond with each other to where going into this year we could pick up the young guys, the young bucks and bring them up to next year with us. Yeah, and going through their schedule, they have very interesting aspects to it. They opened up the season at Texas. That's going to be on Fox, nationally televised. That's a game that's going to receive a lot of attention as far as non-conference goes. Underrated contest. It's later on in the season, so you, it kind of sneaks up on you when you're looking at it. In the middle of the Sun Belt portion of the schedule, they do have a non-conference contest at Liberty later on in the season. Liberty is a team that's a potential nationally ranked team as well as Louisiana. They have... Uh, several star players on that team, like Malik Willis. The Auburn transfer is now the quarterback for Liberty. Heisman attention for him may be a first-round NFL draft pick for Liberty. So they have to go go to Lynchburg in Virginia to face Liberty. So that will be a very interesting non-conference contest for them. But looking at the schedule within the Sun Belt, they visit Georgia Southern, a team that has a, a lot of aspirations. Matter of fact, the, the three, probably, probably the top three Sun Belt teams that they're going to face on their schedule are all on the road. They actually, no, they visit, I, I said that, they visit Georgia Southern, but they get the host, Appalachian State and Georgia State, two teams that are probably going to finish in the top half of the standings in the in the Eastern Division. They don't have Coastal Carolina on the schedule. I know those two fan bases, Coastal and, and Louisiana, have been very vocal about wanting to play last year. They weren't they were unable to do that due to the pandemic and they're not on the schedule in the regular season. The only way that they're going to meet this year will be in the championship game if Lord willing that ends up taking place. If both teams finish well enough to qualify for it and then the matchup can take place. But as far as the standings in the Sun Belt, they don't have to play Coastal Carolina, so that is a little bit of a break for Louisiana. And my final thoughts on Louisiana, though, it's a team that does have high postseason aspirations, and the talk at the the media day was about the Sun Belt getting a team in the playoff or putting themselves in the spot to be in those New Year's Six Bowls. Here is head coach Napier for Louisiana on potentially representing the Sun Belt in the playoffs or even in the New Year's Six Day Bowls. 
Well, to be honest with you, I probably have a little trouble uh, thinking about our league in general at this time of year, you know. Um, but I think the, the resume speaks for itself. You know, when you talk about what this league has accomplished over the last couple of years, uh, the Power Five wins, I think the non-conference wins, uh, and the bowl winning percentage. I think the personnel continues to improve. Um, you know, we've proved to be competitive outside of this league. You know, I think the, the coaching continues to be um, improved. You know, I've been very impressed, not only with the caliber of player that we see week in and week out, but also uh, the coaching. I think there's great creativity. I think the footprint that we all recruit in, if we evaluate and recruit at a high level, um, you know, we can have a good roster and, and we can compete outside of our league. So, in general, we need to continue to, to do what we're doing. You know, I think that there's lots of things at the administrative level, um, you know, within the conference that they, they've got plans for. But when given the opportunity, uh, you've got to play winning football and be competitive uh, in the arena. And that's what we've done as a league, and that's what we'll continue to do. Yeah, and as I said, Louisiana is a team that has that aspiration. If they can navigate through, if they win the Texas game, obviously that'll be a big boost on a national scale. And beating Liberty, who have a very good chance to be ranked by the time those two teams face each other later on in the season, they have a good chance to do that. Then you take care of business on your in your schedule, especially in the conference portion of it. You have two good games at home against App State and Georgia State. You may have, may see Coastal in the championship game. If they win all the if they win all their games and run it out, yeah, they'll have a good chance to be in the New Year's Six Bowl. Uh, but even then, they'll still they look like a team that has double digit win potential when you look at the roster and the way everything shakes out. All right, thanks for listening to the preview of the Louisiana football season here on the Fighting Peaches. As always, go to our website, thesportsacquire.net, for all of those previews that I mentioned earlier for the other Sun Belt teams and other content. In the world of sports, you can go to our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook under the Sports Inquirer. And finally, go to our audio and video content providers on the SoundCloud, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and iTunes. Until next time, good fight, good night, and be safe.